Meet Opal Covey, a sweet little old lady who doesn't want to be mayor of Toledo. She's going to be mayor of Toledo because God has ordained it. Hi, my name is Opal Covey, and I'm running for mayor for the city of Toledo. I feel like I have lived in Toledo for so long that I know this city just like you know the back of your hand, and I'll be a good mayor for you because I love you and I'm very concerned about your needs, and I'm sure they will be met under my leadership. Well, that sounds good. It's a lovely sentiment. Nothing wrong with that. And you know, at the age of 13, I heard God's voice for the first time in my life. There it is. And you know what? I knew it was Him. And he spoke to me a, a miracle. I was very ill and I had a strep throat, couldn't eat, hadn't eaten for two weeks. And I knew something had to be done, but yet I didn't want to go to the doctor. Good plan. Did you have parents? But you know, the doctor came on the scene, Dr. Jesus. Page of Dr. Jesus, Dr. Jesus, please report to emergency, radiology, oncology, maternity, triage, ICU, CCU, rheumatology, urology, and the cafeteria were out of fish and bread. And you know what happened? He said, you go get your sister and her husband and you bring them here and let them pray for you and you'll be healed. He gave me those instructions. Or he could have just healed you himself instead of asking you to get off your deathbed and run a pointless errand for him. And why those people can't pray from their own homes, I don't know. But how about this? Instead of saying, okay, why didn't you say, take me with you? Oh my God, there's really a God. Heaven sounds so much better than this place and I'm just gonna have to get sick again if I stay here, so please don't leave me. I'm already halfway there. I was just about to go into the light. Never mind, I'll go get those people to pray for me. I spoke that to my dad. I said, go get them, bring them here. I'll be healed. And dad still didn't think it was a good time for a doctor. And that's the first time I ever heard God's voice. And he did, and I was healed instantly, began to eat instantly, never had it since. I love this sign. You know why? It, re it represents prosperity. Anytime you say gold, what do you think of? I love gold. Sounds like prosperity. And then when you say a miracle, wow, uh, that's too good. <laughs> that's almost too good to be true. Yes. Yes, it is. And so finally, in 1975, he took me out and I began to evangelize. And guess what? Just like he did to me, I started laying hands on the sick and they began to recover. Everyone that I laid my hands on and prayed that God would heal them, he did. Even the blind eyes were opened and even a leg grew out. All of these extraordinary miracles and even heart trouble from birth was healed instantly. I saw all of these miracles. And guess what, too? Demons began to come out. You know, Jesus said, you'll cast out devils. And I began to do that. And you talk about being happy, because now, now I'm doing something good for people. I can see why it makes her so happy. Exorcisms are fun. To put serpents and scorpions, grant them for all my sins, and power to confront this cruel demon. <laughs> Good times. This, this nice little car, it's, it's only 24 years old, but it still runs real good. Paging Dr. Jesus, Dr. Jesus. And uh, it was given to me in 1996 by people that I didn't even know. I called them in the newspaper and I told them that I really needed a vehicle and it was a miracle that I talk about. No, Opal, I'm sorry. Generosity is not a miracle. And uh, it's gone through two elections, 2001 election. I drove it around. And then the 2005 election, um, I drove it also around. And everybody knows that, that car. Oh, there's not more than one? Then maybe that is the same Mayor Opal 24-year-old car I saw with the American flags and the Vote Opal for Mayor sign on top. Remember, I prophesied this in 2005. A blessed new government awaits you, and Opal is go going to become mayor. So this is previous prophecy even on my car. 
I prophesied bird droppings on my car. I was right. Oh, uh, look at these steps. You know, you know what I, I, I see? Uh, I, I kind of see a roller coaster. I, I hope that they put it uh, right along the river so it would scare people more. <laughs> you know, excitement. Don't people like excitement? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, just have it up over the water. They think that they're going to go down in the water when they come down. And um, then, then over in here, some little things for the children. You know, and I would like to see something, uh, a ride or two made with water. And when I'm there, there's going to be a big castle and there'll be ponies and all of the people of all of the world will get candy. That would be nice, wouldn't it? I see this land. It's been wasted for a long time. It's a park. Oh, it has concerts, but that, that's, that's not what we need. A park with concerts. We need everyday things. And of course, people have asked, what are you going to do in the wintertime? Well, we're going to figure that out. <laughs> and so, um, God, when I take over the seat, it's going to be called Holy Toledo, a paradise city. You're going to feel like you're in Hawaii. You know, they call Hawaii a paradise. Well, Toledo, this is prophecy. When you vote me in, Toledo is going to become like paradise. <laughs> Maybe movies will be made of the city of Toledo and their progress. We have got everything to gain and nothing to lose. There's a platform. I gave a prophecy at the end of a debate and I had to hurry up because they were trying to snuff me out. They try, they've always tried every election to keep my mouth shut. And I was determined I'm going to get that prophecy in. And so I almost yelled it out. I said, if you don't put God on that seat, this city will have destruction and it will be like Katrina. <laughs>